Um, right. Yes. Um, go. Cool. Question number one. <laughs> <laughs> It strikes me that the tuba is a uniquely physical instrument to play. Yeah, all right? definitely. It's um, it requires a lot of breath, mm -hmm. basically, and the more you are familiar with practicing how to master the breathing, basically everything becomes a lot easier. So, mm. breath is the foundation of the whole mastery of the instrument. Yeah. What kind of mindset does that put you in? Performing for a long space of time and a lot of controlled breathing like that—that that must do things to the body and spirit as well. What kind of mindset are you in when you come off stage at the end of a show? Normally euphoric. I think uh, all of my shows are always physical and I put as much energy and attention into what I'm doing as possible. So when I come off stage, it's always a feeling of like euphoria and a level of connecting with an audience, which has been good seeing as during the pandemic, we haven't been able to connect with people. So through expressing myself through the instrument and really tuning into the breathing. Um, it feels like there's a synergy between like the energy of the audience and, and myself. Cool, cool. Um, and the tuba is a, a curious choice for a young man to play. Do you remember holding it for the first time? Did someone, was it like a school event or a community event? Do you remember holding the tuba for the first time? Yeah, the first, the first time I held a tuba, I was a part of a a uh, youth music service called the Lucian Schools Music Service. Um, and I transitioned from a smaller instrument called the euphonium, which I liked, but it just felt m more uncomfortable for me. It was like a tighter um, lip setting. And what I loved about the tuba is, firstly, you have to put your arm around it. So it's got like a, <laughs> like a quite a connection you have to have with it physically. But also the mouthpiece is very relaxed. So it feels like you know, it's not as much pressure you have to apply to it as a, as a trumpet or a saxophone. And you have to almost learn to relax to be able to play it and then it gets tricky. You start, you start doing scales and flexibilities and things. But the first initial feeling of playing it was always like comfortable for me. Cool, is it boring to play it? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> nice. Uh, you're part of a generation of UK jazz musicians who have really raised the bar. I think Britain's got a great jazz heritage, but this current generation have proved that you know, things in the past that may be denied to those musicians are accessible, they can be done. And I think one of the amazing factors of it is that you've all known each other for a long time through Tomorrow's Warriors, through these school schemes. You've known people like Nubia since you were both kids. So what's mm. it been like to watch your peers achieve their dreams like that. Is, is it an inspiring thing to watch all these things happen? Definitely, it definitely feels like the community spirit has resonated with people. I think um, we all knew each other as people first and then musicians. And I think that bond between us is what's formed bands and relationships that's been able to create music that resonates with people on, on, a, on a personal but musical level as well or a, almost spiritual I think. I think the relationship between us as, as people and musicians resonates with others in, who also are community spirited if that makes sense. So yeah it's been really nice to observe how our relationships as people has resonated with, with other, other people and it's been a great privilege to be a part of that generation. Cool, well it's been amazing to hear all the music that's come out in the past few years, it's unbelievable. Um, and you've worked on a, a great number of projects, whether it's something that came out, whether it's you know, popping up for the odd session here and there or running own groups, different variations under your own name. Is collaboration a big part of your compositional process, do you think? Reaching out to other voices in order to find out what it is that makes you you? Definitely, I think um, the amazing thing about playing the tuba or in my experience of, of playing it is that people underestimate it and <laughs> people don't always know its capabilities. So for me that was always a means to put it in as many different contexts as I, as I was allowed to be in and that has made it so that um, people have been more accepting of something different which has been been able to put me in spaces where I wouldn't normally be. Um, and through that, 
it's just been a, a real process of, of meeting people who want to get to know me and want to get to know what I bring and every opportunity I can get to, I guess, express myself and get to know other people through music in a social context is a, is a good way for me to collaborate and has been a big part of my success as a musician. Cool, cool. Um, your parents, I believe, are Jamaican and St. Lucian. Mm. Growing up, was there a lot of music in the house? Were they like putting tunes on every Sunday morning and things? Yeah, I think definitely my, on my dad's side, it was more like music from Jamaica, I'd say, mm. more like reggae and, and ska and, and roots music and even dancehall. On my mum's, it was more um, soca music, but also zook music um, from like the French islands. Um, and also country, because my, my, my grandparents were like heavily into country and yeah. to pass that on to my mum. So yeah, I think that was the backdrop of, of what was around me, but then I also had my own influences. Mm. Um, around that time I got into like grand music, which was the, the sound of, of, of young black teens. Um, and also obviously when I was young, America was like, the, as it is now, is just the massive force. So I used to listen to a lot of hip hop and and um, old school rap from the 90s. So I feel like it's been influenced by my parents, but also um, I've taken influence from what's been around me as, as, a, as, a, as a youngster as well. And I think the music I make is an amalgamation of all those different things. Yeah, it's true. I mean, your, your music is recognizably jazz, but also not jazz. It incorporates so many different things. How do you as a composer begin to absorb all these things together? Sometimes melding genres together can be quite a haphazard thing to blend grime with jazz. It can be quite an awkward thing to do for some people, but it feels very natural with you. And how do you think you go about achieving something like that? I think the goal is just to be myself. I think uh, all of these things are within me and all of these things are things that I have a natural curiosity about and a natural affinity for. So it's more a case of understanding myself and my own influences and what makes me happy and then putting that into my creative process. I think if I tried to say I'm going to merge, I don't know, like a garage and soca, it wouldn't work. <laughs> I think it's got to be a natural, um, a natural need to explore with my own interests. And I think that's what's... I've done and, and many people of, of my age group have done t to make this thing sound authentic to ourselves. Cool, cool. And I suppose the same stands true for being a band leader and bringing people together. And I know you've got some special guests for the performance you're doing for us. Mm -hmm. How do you put together a band for the right performance? Is it a sense of curation and what you want to achieve musically? Is it the chemistry of the people involved? How do you bring people together as a band leader? It's definitely, for me, a process of resonating with everyone's own individual talents. Um, for example, Chelsea is just an amazing improviser. I think even if she was to blow by herself for an hour, it would be entertaining because <laughs> mm -hmm. she's just got a great improvisational mind. Patrick, who's playing drums behind me, is very technical, and, and whatever groove I choose to throw at him, he'll be able to do easily. And Nikos is just a master of texture, and I think through having a respect for what they do, it was a case of asking myself, why do I use what I find great about them in my exploration and or in my, the way that I want to explore uh, my musical direction. So it's a case of, I think, as a band leader, having the respect um, for the artistry of people that you, you, you do respect as musicians and crafting it into um, a show or a piece of music that that sounds like what I want to express if that makes sense so it's leading the music and kind of steering the energy of, of, of others and what they bring um, to the band cool cool and looking ahead um, you mentioned lockdown and the pandemic and the impact that's had a lot of people were left kind of looking inwards and left with space and time to create. Is that something that you've found? Have you been able to experiment with your sound and, and write a lot over the past couple of years? Definitely, and I think um, the pandemic for me was definitely the time I needed 
to actually hone my sound and, and, and go into into myself essentially. The album I put out is called Intra Eye, which means within self. Um, and because I wasn't able to do band records in the same way, the whole album was made out of me layering myself as much as possible doing the melody of a tune and the bass and the chords all with the same instrument. Um, and it's been an, it's been a means to explore what is possible um, with that instrument, and really get to develop and push what I thought was was possible. And I think the pandemic and the situation we were all in gave me the the time and space to do that. And intra I was um, the baby that emerged mm. from that <laughs> from the womb of the pandemic. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's it's been great, and it's been great to collaborate with vocalists for the first time as well. I've had this album features artists I really respect, like Shumba Masai, Afrinaut Zoo, Anansi, um, Consentus, people who are friends of mine, but also could really speak to the idea of going into self and learning more about self and, and using the time that we had in the pandemic to understand wh who we are and what our intentions are now that we are going back into the world. So. Nice. And looking ahead, are you? You mentioned that that euphoria of appearing on stage and that sense of connection. Is that something you're searching for for the rest of this year? Do you want to focus on live, or do you think that you can envisage another Theon project before the year's out? I think um, art imitates life. <laughs> I think in my creative process, and I think this album was made out of things that are happening in my own life. Um, my my father passing, which put into the, which was something I was able to churn into the music, and also just a sense of having a time to learn more about myself as as a man um, was all part of the journey of which I put into this music. So I think whatever my next project is will only be a reflection of um, what I'm going through right now. <laughs> so. I think when it's when it's ready, it's ready. But I think life has to dictate which direction and what I'm going to say next, basically. Cool. But well, you're looking forward to a lot of live performances and reconnecting with people. Definitely. I think um, I've missed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed not performing. I think that's been something also needed. But I think exchanging energy with with people that support you and, and want um, want like musical upliftment or, um, or upliftment through music um, is something that's really dear and special to me so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be able to go back into the world and give energy and also receive it. <laughs>